Oh, what the heck happened there? <laughs> they are always watching. That's right, John. Okay. Still got edge up there. Okay. Here's how we do this. There we go. Good morning, everybody. This is Donald Blondo, Hall of Fame veteran, sports cards, and collectibles. Coming to you live. From Arlington, Washington. Hopefully you all are having a great day today. The start of a new week on Donald Blondahl Hall of Fame Veteran Sports Cards and Collectibles. Coming to you live from Arlington, Washington. Hopefully everybody's having a good start to your week. Let me get my uh, other computer up to date here. Uh... And we will be on track for everything here today. Let me get this up and ready and will ready and willing. And I'll get my free entries in there. We have a few minutes to chit chat in the channel. All right? Don't forget thummies up, thummies up, thummies up for me. Sorry about the craziness of trying to get things ready for today. We are in the house for sure. Don't know if there's anybody in here with me. It says only two people watching right now. But we will see if anybody shows up. Um, I can tell I'm live. I know I'm live. John Fishman was in here earlier. The Bipster of all things Wax Pack was in here. But I do not see anybody chatting in the chat room. Let's see who ends up being the first in the live chat. I know we're live. Are people just lurking about and not in the stream yet? Let me do a refresh here. Let me do a refresh and see if maybe something is not working on my computer. I don't think so. 1010, whether there's somebody here or not, we'll get into our content at hand for today. All right, it's reloading, updating, and into the mix. They are always watching, John said. Just before I went live here, he said, I, I tried to type out Seattle Runners like I usually do and got this message. Message deleted by the Google moderator team. <laughs> All right, so is there anybody out there in YouTube land? We'll just keep going forward and moving around, moving in, moving out. I got 10.03. This is an odd for me. Nobody has showed up yet. I know it's everything's set the way it's supposed to be. I am pretty sure we are not on public. Nope, it says privacy, public, live, concurrent viewers, three concurrent viewers, five playback so far, but nobody is chatting in the chat room. Um, I know the chat's working because I typed Seattle Mariners in the chat earlier before I went live because sometimes I know I have had that happen. It says I have an excellent con connection. Uh, we've got a couple people popping in here now. We had three people watching. One thumbs up. I know some people just watch from the background mode and that is fine. But we are going to have some fun today. Today I'm going to do Andrew Jones's baseball player biography. For those that may know Andrew Jones, Cards in My Car with Our Posada is here first in the live chat at 10.04. So our, our timestamp is 10.04. I know you're probably in the background there mode there. I don't know if you're in class today there, Robert, or what you've got going on for sure. Hope 
hopefully everyone is having a great day. All right, Robert, so you have got three entries into um, I am here, will be in and out with work. Oh, no problem, John. No problem whatsoever, John. All right, so thank you for being here. Um, so let me get cards in my car with our Posada. Let me get you into my Wheel of Names here for the free entries. So we've got cards in my car with our Posada. Let me get your entries in here really quick. Okay. And then, John, since you were in here earlier, let me get your three entries in here. As soon as I find where you were in here before. I know you were in here before. There we go. I've got John. I've got your couple of entries for you for the first in the live chat today. And one earlier from the Bipster of All Things Wax Pack. Let me get his in here, and then I'll give you an update on where we stand with the entries for the month of March. And we've got four more minutes. All right. Let me save the file so I don't lose anything in case my computer crashes. At least the file will be up to date. So we now have 143 entries into the Wheel of Names. Into the Wheel of Names. Oh, i got to fix that Andrew Jones. Maybe that's why it would, didn't come up right when I searched for it. I've got the Andrew and the Jones together. i got to put a space between there. i got to put a space between there. Let me see if I can fix that real quick before we get into our content at hand here. Mm, I think I can while we're still alive. Yeah, it'll let me add that extra space in there, I think. Yes, okay. Now it should update. That's why I typed it in trying to find it earlier and it said it was not in there because I was typing it wrong. So let me uh, refresh my page here and it should show everything up good to go, rip roaring, and ready to play. There we go. Now we got it. Andrew Jones baseball player biography plus family mail call from Ethan's Elvis covers and more. And we will be getting three more packs out of the Bipster box again. Three more pack box. Oh, hold on. Let me, uh, okay, come on. That's what I chopped off there. I chopped off the Bipster box. Well, actually, here we go. If I do it right like that, I think we're good to go. The Bipster box. I like having the extra camera and stuff. I can move each screen around where I want it and cut off stuff. I figured out I was always like, how can I zoom in? How can I zoom in? You can zoom in so far, but the more you zoom in, the blurrier the picture gets. So I kind of got it set up right about here. We got about one more minute, and then we'll get into the biography at hand here for Andrew Jones. We will get into Andrew Jones's uh, biography. Let me get a sip of water before we do get started here. So we will be good to go right at 1010. Hopefully you all are having a good start. I know this is your second day of the week for you guys. First day of the week for me. Sorry I did not get everything scheduled last night. I was, uh, don't get old, okay? I had to uh, take care of an ingrown toenail. Uh, but uh, I, I have that problem. I just have to keep an eye on it. And yesterday when my wife took me out shopping and stuff, 
it was bothering me. So I was like, uh oh, time to take out the ingrown toenail. And uh, I do it before it gets really bad. <laughs> Once I feel the pain, I'm like, okay, it's gone down there a little bit too deep. I gotta, I gotta dig in there and pull it out. <laughs> so I had to do that. So we have 1010. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Donald. I am here. We'll be in and out with work. No problem. Robert. Robert. Cards in my car with Robert Posada. All right. And I'm sure Bipster will pop in here eventually. But let's get into the biography for Andrew Jones. Most of you probably might know how, what the story is with Andrew Jones, but it was requested by somebody in the channel. It may have been uh, Left Behind Times or somebody that is an Atlanta Braves fan, I'm assuming, because he did play with the Atlanta Braves, the Dodgers, the Rangers, the White Sox, the Yankees. And when he did end up his career, he played with the Tahuko Rokuten Golden Eagles in Japan. So he did do a stint at the end of his career in Japan. So Andrew Jones, Andrew Rudolph Jones, um, was born April 23rd, 1977. Ethan's Elvis covers and more is here. All right. I uh, can't stay long. About to go golfing with my roommates. Oh, no problem, Ethan. I'm going to be opening up your package right after the biography here. And then we will get into the Bipster box here and pull out three more packs out of this one. And I'm hoping to get a new another box from the Bipster to refill the box because it's starting to get empty. All right. But Andrew Rudolph Jones um, is a... Karakoan, former baseball outfielder and designated hitter who played 17 seasons in Major League Baseball, most notably for the Atlanta Braves. Jones also played for the Los Angeles Dodgers, Texas Rangers, Chicago White Sox, and the New York Yankees. Uh, and in Nippon Professional Baseball for the Tahuko Rakuten Golden Eagles in Japan. Jones was no a noted defensive specialist for most of his career and won the Rawlings Gold Glove Award for Outfielders every year from 1998 through 2007. He had a strong throwing arm in addition to his elite fielding. He was an MLB All-Star five times and he won both the Hank Aaron award and silver slugger award for outfielders in 2005 and we have a commercial break ethan's elvis covers and more says with a dollar 99 super chat ready for opening day <laughs> that's for the two dollar super chat there ethan let me get your two entries into my march giveaway uh oh sorry Ran out of space there. Let me get Ethan's Elvis covers and more. That dollar ninety nine super chat has gotten you two entries into my March giveaway. Two entries into my March giveaway. So let me get Ethan in here. Oh wait a minute. No. Yeah. Okay. There's one, there's two, and go ahead and save it. We now have 145 entries. So we have 145 entries for the month of March so far. And yes, due to popular demand at the end of this month, I will be bringing back my monthly sales. Um, hi guys. Just got the best news of the year. They have approved the people on the same treatment drug to be approved to get the vaccine. I am going to get to see my kids and grandkids soon. Oh, that is super cool there, Big Ray. Glad you're able to get the vaccine soon so you'll be able to be together with your family again. That is cool. Uh, hope you're having a good day, Ethan. Hello, Big Ray. All right. So, again, we've got the wheel saved, so 145 entries. 
And uh, thanks for stopping by there, Big Ray. Appreciate it. And thanks, Ethan, for being here for a little while. Hopefully you have a good golf day with your buddies there, Ethan. All right. So Jones made his MLB debut during the 1996 season with the Atlanta Braves. In 1996 World Series, he became the youngest player ever to hit a home run in the postseason and just the second player ever to homer in his first two World Series at-bats. The following season, Jones finished fifth in voting for the Rookie of the Year. Da, da, da. There you go. <laughs> Ethan, I like that little, he's got a little golf emoji there. All right, congratulations there, Big Ray, exactly. All right, uh, ba ba ba. Uh, from 1998 to 1999, and he continued to increase his offensive production in 2000. Jones batted 303 with 36 home runs and 104 RBIs, making his first All-Star team. Jones started to draw many comparisons to Willie Mays and was considered one of the top center fielders in baseball. The following season, he again hit over 30 home runs and drove in 104 runs, but his average dipped to 251 while his strikeouts increased. Jones improved with all-star seasons in 2002-2003, but in 2004, um, he failed to hit at least 30 home runs for the first time since 1999 and exceeded 100 strikeouts. He became a regular occurrence thereafter. Let me take a quick commercial break here. Big Ray's Ball Cards and Auctions got the Tops Now card. I won from you, Donald. Thank you so much. Very generous. Oh, no problem there. No problem. Hopefully you enjoyed that gift for being in my uh, February giveaway. That is their Big Ray's for your $5 Super Chat. Let me get your five entries into my Wheel of Names. Get your five entries into uh, my Wheel of Names. Okay, looks like it's probably, okay, right here. Let me get these into my wheel of names there, Big Ray. Five more entries for the wheel of names. That should put us up to the uh, 150 mark here. 150 mark. There's. Okay. Okay. Yes, we now have 150 entries into the Wheel of Names for the month of March. Thank you there, Big Ray, for that $5 super chat. Much appreciated, sir. Thank you all. Oh, no problem. We we will be sending up prayers for you that everything will go fine there. And before you know it here, you'll be able to be back together with family. Okay, uh, where was I? Okay, in 2005, he led the National League with 51 home runs, 128 RBIs, finishing second to Albert Pujols for National League Most Valuable Player. In subsequent seasons, his average continued to dip and his strikeouts increased. After a productive season in 2006, including a career high of 129 RBIs, in 2000. Seven, Jones had his weakest start season to that point, batting just 222. During this time with Atlanta, Jones became one of the youngest players in MLB history to reach 300 career home runs. After the 2007 season, Jones uh, signed with the Los Angeles Dodgers as a free agent to a two-year deal worth $36.2 million. However, Jones struggled with the Dodgers, batting just 158 with three home runs and 14 RBIs. Shortly after the season, Jones was released. Jones con 
concluded his MLB career with brief stints for the Rangers, White Sox, and Yankees, transitioning from center fielder to designated hitter and a fourth outfielder role. While with the White Sox, Jones hit his 400th career home run. As far as his early life, Jones was born on April 23, 1977 in the capital city of Wilmstad on the Caribbean island nation of Caraco. By the age of 11, Jones was on a youth select team that traveled all the way to Japan to play in a tournament. He could handle any position on the field, but because of his powerful arm, Jones often found himself at catcher or third base. He switched to the outfield a couple of years later. Stories of Andrew's early accomplishments are the stuff of legend. As a 13-year-old playing for his father's Royal Scorpions team, he sent a ball screaming over 400 feet to the tennis court in a nearby hotel. At the same game, Andrew came up again and hit the hotel. By his early teens, he was competing against adults, even played on Caracas national team in the Latin American games. By the time Andrew turned 15, um, he was the best player on the island. He had yet to be discovered, however, Caraco was still well off the beaten path for Major League Scouts, even though countryman Hensley Bullens had done well in the New York Yankees farm system. Okay. All right, my computer was being slow there for a second. As far as his early professional career, Jones signed with the Atlanta Braves organization as a free agent in 1993 at the age of 16. Jones was promoted to Danville of the Appalachian League after only 27 games with the Braves farm team in West Palm Beach, Florida. Jones played for the Class A Macon in 1995. In his first at-bat, he belted a home run. He finished the season with 25 home runs and 100 runs batted in. Jones also led the South Atlantic League with 56 steals. His outstanding season was capped off when he was named Minor League Player of the Year. All right. Pop in the chat real quick. Uh, thank you all, Big Race. Sitting in the waiting room to get my bi-weekly treatment now and have never felt this good going in. The news today is just a miracle for me and my current situation. Just wanted to stop by and say thank you for the prize, Donald. I was bursting at the proverbial seams to share the good news. Off to call the kids and we'll try to come back. No problem there, Big Ray. You take care and enjoy your celebratory day there. That is awesome good news for you. All right. So as far as his professional career now, as far as his professional career, um, the Braves brought Jones oh, with the Atlanta Braves in 1996 to 2007. The Braves brought Jones up to Atlanta on August 15, 1996. And he was just 19 years old in his first career major league game. Jones went one for five with a run batted in and a run scored. In his second game, he went two for five with a home run and a triple. He had his first multi-homer game against the Reds on August the 22nd. He spent his early time in the majors playing in right field because field because established center fielders Marquis Grissom and Kenny Lofton were already entrenched in the position, and he finished the season batting 217 with five home runs and 13 RBIs. Jones was selected to the Braves' postseason roster in 1996 in the National League Championship Series against the Cardinals. Jones batted 222 with a home run and three RBIs, and the Braves won the series and advanced to the World Series. In Game 1 of the 1996 World Series on October 20, 1996, Jones was able to demonstrate his talents on the national stage. He connected for two home runs and left field 
on his first two at-bats as the Braves routed the New York Yankees 12-1. Jones became the youngest player ever to homer in the World Series. At the age of 19 years, 180 days, breaking Mickey Mantle's record of 20 years, 362 days, on what would have been Mantle's 65th birthday. Jones joined Gene Tennis as the only other player to hit home runs in his first two World Series at-bats. Tennis did it in 1972 with the Oakland Athletics. Jones became the Braves' everyday right fielder in 1997. Jones hit his first home run of the season against Jeff McCurry of the Rockies. Jones had his second multi-homer game against the Cubs on July 22nd. On August 31st, Jones went 3-for-3 three three with a home run and five runs batted in in a game against the Boston Red Sox. Jones finished his rookie season with a two thirty one batting average, 18 home runs, and 70 runs batted in. Jones also showed his speed by stealing 20 bases. He finished fifth in the Rookie of the Year voting. In 1998, he moved to center field nearly full-time and had much more encouraging season. He hit his 30th home run of the season against Florida on September 13th. He also won his first 10 straight Gold Glove Awards in the 1998 National League Division Series. Jones went 0 for 9 but did draw three walks. The Braves won the series against the Cubs in the 1998 NLCS against the San Diego Padres. Jones batted 273 with a home run and two RBIs. However, the Braves lost the series in six games. Whether he was in the batter's box or gliding under a fly ball to make an easy basket catch, Jones played the game in a very relaxed manner. His this temporarily earned him the ire of manager Bobby Cox in June 1998 as an incident in which Cox pulled Jones out of the game. In the midst of an inning, because he felt Jones had lazily allowed a single to drop in center field, Jones went on to hit 271 with 31 home runs, 90 runs batted in, and stole 27 bases. Still, just 22 years old, Jones had similar numbers in 1999. He had a breakout season with his bat in 2000 and career hits up until that point in batting average 303, home runs 36, RBIs 104. He had earned his first All-Star Game appearance. He also led the National League in plate appearances with 729 and at bats with 656. Jones struggled in the National League Division Series against the Cardinals. He went 1 for 9 with a home run and the Braves lost the series. However, in 2001, Jones's batting average fell and his strikeouts went up. Jones finished with 34 home runs and 104 RBIs, but his average dropped to only 251 and he struck out 142 times. By now, Jones had gained nearly 30 pounds. Mud Dog is in the house. Hello, Donald. How are you? I have not seen you in a long time there, Mud, God. Mud Dog. Hopefully, you are doing well. I think if I remember right, I have to recollect here. Are you back in Kentucky again? I can't remember for sure, but I think that's where I remember you last moving back to or something. But thanks for popping in here, Mud Dog. Mud, Mud Dog. And yes, see, I never took your wrench away. You're still part of my crew. Glad to see you there, Mud Dog. It has been a long, long time, but glad to see you back in the house. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. In 2003, with power hitting Gary Sheffield in a lineup, Jones achieved a new career high watermark in RBIs with 116. Jones made his third All Star game team and homered in the game. The American League beat the National League 7 to 6. In the 2004 season, he took a step backward when he hit fewer than 30 home runs and stuck struck out 147 times during the season. Jones was subject of trade rumors. So then we have his breakout year in 2005. Prior to the 2005 season, Jones increased his workout regimen and followed the advice given by Willie Mays to widen his batting stance. The result was his most productive offensive season ever. After Chipper Jones went down with an injury in early 2005, Jones carried the Braves. By the All-Star break, Jones was leading the National League in home runs with 27. Jones was named the All-Star 
to the All-Star team the fourth time of his career. Jones hit his 40th home run of the season on August 23rd in a loss against the Cubs. It marked the first time in his career that he hit at least 40 home runs in a season. Jones became the first Braves hitter to hit 40 home runs in a season since Javi Lopez did it in 2003. On September 14, 2005, Jones hit his 300th career home run, which went 430 feet off Philadelphia Phillies reliever Jeff Geary in a 12-4 Phillies win. The ball landed in the upper deck in the left field at Citizens Bank Park. Jones became the first hitter since Alex Rodriguez and Jim Thome to hit at least 50 home runs in a season. Jones also became the 12th player in history to hit 300 home runs before his 30th birthday. Jones hit a major league leading 51 home runs, surpassing Hank Aaron's and Eddie Matthews' single season club record, and winning Babe Ruth home, the Babe Ruth Home Run Award. He also led the National League with career high RBIs, Jones toured hitting in the summer, especially while teammate Chipper Jones was out with an injury, helped carry the Braves to their 14th consecutive division championship. He finished just behind St. Louis Cardinals first baseman Albert Pujols in the 2005 National League MVP vote. In 2005, the National League Divisional Series against the Houston Astros, Jones hit 471 with a home run and five RBIs. However, the Astros took the season, took the series three games to one. In 2006, uh, I'm doing good and living in South, okay, South Alabama. That's where you moved to. Did you move up to Kentucky for a little stint and then back down to South Alabama? I could be wrong there. It, again, for this, for this old man to try and remember where, where his different people are. I mean, I'm not like Eric that has, getting close, what, Eric has, I think, 86,000 subscribers now. Um, I'm going to go into a little commercial break about jabs after a little bit here, but uh, he is just, I think this year he'll reach 100,000 subscribers. I really do. I think he'll hit 100,000 subscribers. But you know what? He's the big time. I'm just a little channel trying to have fun and sharing the history of baseball with my fans that come into my little baby channel. I lived in Tennessee back then. Okay, Tennessee. It wasn't Kentucky. It was Tennessee. All right. So in 2006, before the 2006 season, Jones played in the World Baseball Classic for the Netherlands. Jones started the season by hitting a home run off a pitch from Derek Lowe. Jones finished the game by going two for four with a home run, four runs batted in, a strikeout, and a base on balls. The Braves won the game 11-10. to From April 16th to April 19th, Jones homered in four consecutive games. During the stretch, he batted 438 with five home runs and eight RBIs. Jones finished this month of April with a 281 average, 8 home runs, and 23 runs batted in. Jones matched his career high with 6 runs batted in on July 18th against the Cardinals. He also went 5 for 5 with 2 home runs. On August 29th in a game against the Giants, Jones drove in 3 runs, which 3 runs, which gave him his 1,000th career RBI. On September 26th, in a game against the New York Mets, Jones hit his 40th home run of the season. He became the first hitter in Atlanta's history to have consecutive seasons of at least 40 homers. Jones finished the 2006 season with 41 home, home runs and 129 RBIs. Jones became more selective at the plate with 82 walks compared to 64 the prior season which helped him score 107 runs during 2006, an increase of 12 over the prior year and his most in a single season since 2000. He won his ninth consecutive Gold Glove Award, and the Braves finished with a 79-83 and record and missed the postseason for the first time since 1990. All right, in 2007, coming... Into the last year of his contract with the Braves, many fans and sports and analysts 
felt that 2007 would be the last year in which Jones would be a Brave, mostly because of his potential value on the market that the Braves would not be able to afford. Jones, however, had an unexpectedly poor start to the season, striking out 51 times in 41 games and carrying a batting average in the low 200s for the majority of April and May. On April 30th, Jones hit a three-run walk-off home run against the Phillies. On May 28th, Jones hit his 350th career home run off Chris Capuano. After the All-Star break, Jones continued to have productive power numbers. However, his batting average remained poor. He was honored with a Fielding Bible Award as the best fielding center fielder in the MLB. Jones finished the 2007 season with a 26 with 26 home runs and 4, 94 RBIs. On the downside, Jones hit only 222 and struck out 138 times. On October 2nd, the Braves announced they would not be bringing Jones back for the 2008 season. The Los Angeles Dodgers then, in 2008, on December 5, 2007, Jones agreed to a two-year deal with the Los Angeles Dodgers worth $36.2 million. After showing up out of shape and over 20 pounds overweight, he continued to struggle, hitting below 200 for the most of the season. Additionally, he had only 10 hits, 116 at-bats with runners in scoring position, and due to his lack of production, Jones was dropped to 8th in the Dodgers lineup. And this was the first time since 1998 that Jones had hit 8th in any lineup. Jones was put on the disabled list for the first time his entire career on May 25, 2008. He had knee surgery after injuring his knee during batting practice earlier that day. On July 27, 2008, the Dodgers manager, Joe Torre, benched Jones and said that he would only be used as a spot starter in the future. At that time, Jones had a 166 batting average, two home runs, and 12 RBIs combined with 68 strikeouts in 187 at-bats. On September 13, 2008, Jones was put on the 60-day disabled list and removed from the playoff roster, putting an end to his season with the Dodgers. Jones finished the season with a 158 batting average, just three home runs, and a 14 RBIs. Jones stated that he did not wish to return to the Dodgers in 2009, saying that the Los Angeles fans did not give him a fair chance. During the 2009 offseason, the Dodgers reached an agreement with Jones to trade or release him before spring training in exchange for a deferral of some of the remaining money due on his contract. On January 15th, Jones was officially released by the Dodgers. Uh, my dog A cards. Uh, they don't. John Fishman says, Seattle Mariners. Let's see if Google deletes that. <laughs> All right there, John. Uh, Jones also... Oh, Texas Rangers in 2009. On February 8, 2009, Jones signed a one-year minor league contract with the Texas Rangers. The deal paid him $500,000 for making the major league team and offered a million dollars in incentives. Jones reportedly turned down a similar offer from the New York Yankees to compete for their center field job and expressed interest in staying with the Rangers even though he would not be a starter. He earned the Rangers' final roster spot. He was originally intended to be a pinch hitter for the Rangers, but found a starting outfield role due to an injury to Josh Hamilton. Jones would go 3-for-5 in his Rangers debut with an RBI and two runs scored. In the next game, Jones went 2-for-3 and scored two runs. He also hit his first home run as a member of the Rangers in the seventh inning of uh, Daney's that Baez, by the end of April, Jones was batting 344 with three home runs and six runs batted in. Jones also faced with an opportunity to play against 
his old club, the Dodgers. Jones played two games against them on the 13th and 14th, homering in each game. On July 4th, Jones went two for five with a home run and four runs batted in against the Rays. On July 8th, in a game against the Angels, Jones hit three home runs and drove in four runs in an 8-1 win. It was the second career three-run home run game Jones had to hit his fourth home run of the game in his final two at bats, but popped out and struck out. I was thinking about it. I tried. I just didn't get it done, Jones said. I'm just happy we won. Jones ultimately hit only 214 for the season, but did have 17 home runs and 82 games. Da, 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 da. Let's see. A little. Andrew, let's see. Uh, Andrew Jones went downhill quick, then he went to the Dodgers. All that LA food. <laughs> All right, then on to the Chicago White Sox. Where's Chuck? Where's Chuck? On November 25th, 2009, Jones signed a $500,000 deal for 2010 with up to a, an additional $1 million in performance bonuses, unlike what he had done with the Braves and Dodgers in previous seasons. Jones showed up to camp in shape, a full 30 pounds under his previous weight. And on April 23rd, 2010, Jones hit two home runs on his 33rd birthday, including a walk-off to help the White Sox win 7-6 over the Seattle Mariners. On July 9th, he hit his 400th career home run. He finished the year with 19 home runs and 278 at-bats. He scored 41 runs, had 48 RBIs, and 64 base hits in 107 games, the most games he has appeared in since 2007. Then on to the New York Yankees for the 2011 and 2012 season. Uh, I saw an article that Chicago White Sox fans drink the most of any MLB team. Oh, my word. On January 20th, 2011, Jones and the New York Yankees agreed to a contract for the 2011 season for $2 million with an additional $1.2 million in performance bonuses. In his first Yankees at-bat on April 5th, 2011, Jones hit a home run over the left field wall at Yankee Stadium off the Minnesota Twins' Brian Dunsing. Uh, Jones finished the season with a 247 average, 13 home runs, and 33 RBIs, and he became a free agent after the World Series. Jones re-signed with the Yankees for the 2012 season on December 30th, 2011, with a one-year deal worth $2 million. He was slated to be a backup, however, due to Brett Gardner's uh, disabled list then, um, Jones received more starts than anticipated. Jones played very well in the first half of the season, hitting 12 home runs in his first 62 games, including three over the course of a doubleheader in Boston. But in August and September, he had only 139 with two home runs over his final 32 games. And then on to Nippon Professional Baseball, the Tohoku Rakuten Golden Eagles from 2013 to 2014. On December 7, 2012, Jones agreed to a one-year 300 million yen, approximately $3.5 million, contract with the Tohoku Rakuten Golden Eagles of Japan's Pacific League. He finished the regular season with 26 home runs and 478 at-bats. He scored 81 runs, had 94 RBIs, 116 base hits, and 105 walks in 143 games, helping the Eagles clinch their first Pacific League championship. His steady performance continued in postseason, including two home runs in the 2013 Pacific League Climax Series and won in 2013 Japanese Japan Series, respectively, which played a key, key role in the Eagles' Japan Series win. After the season, Jones resigned with the Rakuten for the 2014 season, agreeing to a one-year contract worth $400 million, approximately $3.8 million U.S., in his two years with Rakuten, Jones hit 50 home runs and played primarily at designated hitter. However, he played 48 games at first base, far more than the eight uh, he played in his career before coming to Japan. And then on to his retirement. 
Since playing in Japan, Jones attempted comebacks in both the 2015 and 2016 MLB seasons. He officially retired from baseball in February of 2016 and was hired by the Braves as a special assistant that later month. As far as his career summary, at as at the end of the 2012 season, Jones owned a career 254 average with 434 home runs, 1,289 RBIs. And, uh, he currently ranks 40th on the career home run list. However, Jones' weakness has been hitting against the breaking ball and hitting for good average. Only once in his career has Jones batted 300 or better. He batted 303 in 2000, and since 2007, the year he turned 30, he has just hit 214. Jones was also known for his speed early in his career. In fact, his speed earned him the past playoff spot on the Braves' roster in 1996. Jones stole 20-plus bases from 1997 to 2000. However, his speed declined as he hit for more power. Jones has not stolen at least 10 bases since he stole 11 in 2001. This could also be attributed to a noticeable weight gain. Uh, da, 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 da. Where are we? There we go. John Fishman, can anyone... Anyone can hit a home run against the Mariners. Just got back from the doctor. Tardy slip, please. 30 pounds of goodies headed your way. Okay there, Vipster. Um, Ethan as Ric Flair on TikTok is awesome. Oh yeah, I saw that yesterday. That was an interesting video that uh, Ethan did there. And then... Uh, Hello to all. No problem. Hello there, Bipster. Appreciate you being here again. I'm almost finishing up here, getting ready to wrap up. Jones also owned the lowest batting average since broke since broken by Jose, ba Jose Bautista in 2010. Slugging percentage, on base percentage, and run scored in a season for a hitter that belted 50 plus home runs in a season. Jones hit 51 in 2005, but just batted just 263 with a 575 slugging and a 347 on base and 95 runs scored. From 1998 to 2007, Jones won 10 consecutive gold gloves. His 10 gold gloves for an outfielder ranks him in a tie for second with Al Kaline, Ichiro Suzuki, and Ken Gravy Jr. For most gold gloves won by an outfielder, Jones is also one of five center fielders to record at least 400 punch outs in, a, in six times. The others are Willie Mays, Richie Ashburn, Kirby Puckett, and Max Carey. As far as his international career, uh, well, Donald and Bibby, you have TikTok, you two are hip. Oh, I don't have TikTok. It's just I get notifications from Ethan when he does things, and it just tied it into TikTok. That's the only way I saw it. Matter of fact, the only way I saw it was I think uh, Bipster shared it with me, and then I watched it. <laughs> Ethan's turned into a wild and crazy young man, that's for sure. But it's fun to watch him sometimes. Uh... As far as his international career, being born in Caraco allowed Jones to be eligible for the Netherlands national baseball team during their participation in the inaugural World Baseball Classic. In 2006, Jones would later join the team again in 2013 World Baseball Classic. Uh, two years later, in 2015, Jones was selected to play with the national Dutch team as a first baseman for the 2015 Premier 12. Later, he announced that those were his final games as a player. And then lastly, before we do his uh, career synopsis, Jones, uh, his personal life, Jones was married to Nicole Derrick. They are the parents of one son, Drew, and one daughter, Madison. He also had a son with Melissa Villacourt, Joshua, born in 2005. Early on the morning of Christmas Day 2012, Jones was arrested for battery after police officers responded to a domestic disturbance call between him and his wife Nicole in suburban Atlanta. He was released on $2,400 bond late that morning. Nicole Jones filed for divorce in early 2012. 
January 2013, and the two went to custody over to court over custody on their son. Uh, for their son. So next and last, I'll go over his career in a at a glance. Andrew Jones, uh, of course, was primarily during his career a center fielder. Born April 23rd, 1977. He is currently 43 years old right now. Um, he batted right through right. His professional debut was August 15th, 1996 for the Atlanta Braves. Uh, NPB, March 29, 2013 for the Tohoku Rakuten Golden Eagles. His last appearance in the MLB was October 3rd, 2012 for the New York Yankees, and the NPB October 1st, 2014 for the Tokoo Rakatoon Golden Eagles. His MLB statistics, his batting average was 254, home runs 434, runs batted in 1,289. Um, as far as his NPB statistics, his international, Batting average was 232, home runs 50, and runs batted in 165. And the teams that he played with during his baseball playing career was Atlanta Braves, uh, 1996 to 2007, the Los Angeles Dodgers in 2008, the Rangers in 2009, the White Sox in 2010, the Yankees in 2011 and 12, and the Tohoku. Rakuten Golden Eagles 2013 and 14. He was a five times All Star 2000, 2002, 3, 5, and 6. A 10 time Gold Glove Award winner between the years of 1998 and 2007. He was a Silver Slugger Award winner in 2005, a National League Hank Aaron Award in 2005, a MLB Home Run Leader in 2005, a National League RBI Leader in 2005. He's also in the Braves, Atlanta Braves Hall of Fame. Uh, and in the NPB, he was an All-Star in 2013 and a Japan Series Champion also in 2013. All right. Like 10 gold gloves, I think, Jones should be in the Hall of Fame, his defense alone, not to mention his power hitting. All right, let me do a refresh on the live chat here, and we will get ready to get into the next part of the live stream today. Let me uh, switch this over here. Hopefully you guys are all, again, having a wonderful day there. Let me uh, switch over here. All right. I can see my chats. You guys can see me. I've got the box here. The Bipster box will be our final part that we'll do. But we're going to get into Ethan's package here first and go through this really quick. Okay. So I'm going to... Uh, Cut open the bag here for Ethan's package. I'm trying to remember. I know a few things. I bought at a sale, and then a little bit off, off sale items that I did get from him. So without further ado, we can see at least for sure we do have another Kyle Lewis. The bag is empty. Okay, we set that off to the side here. That will go with my reusable bags for sure. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, take unblue tape it here. I like that Ethan's starting to use the blue tape also. Okay. All right. Oh, there we go. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it. I guess this this time here it worked. For what it's intended to do here. But I do like to save my blue tape and reuse it, so that's why I'm just putting it on the side of my break table here. Oh my word. Uh, 
I don't remember getting that, but he must have just gave me some extra cards or something. But let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got. Uh, is Justin Upton, is that, isn't that Mike Trout? Isn't that Mike Trout with the angels there? Elbows only, air high five. Maybe he gave me some bonus uh, 2021. I told him I, know, I haven't really got much 2021 product yet. Elbows only. Trout follows protocol after Upton, Upton's solo shot. That's a pretty cool card there. I like that one. Two one three. Pretty sure it's just the base cards, right? Two one three. Yeah, it's not a short print or anything. But still, that's a pretty pretty nice card. Elbows only, era five. Then we got a Kyle Seeger here. Kyle Seeger. Oh, keep forgetting I gotta pull these up here so you guys can see the cards. <laughs> I was holding them at the wrong angle there. Gotta remember what we are doing now. Hold on, let me out. Uh, I'm going to move my chair just a little bit closer here so I can get into these cards. Bipster box is going to be bountiful. There we go. Thank you, dear Bipster. Let me scooch that out of the way and put that penny sleeve there. But a Kyle Seeger. Kyle Seeger and a Marco Gonzalez. Marco Gonzalez. There we go. Justin Dunn, future star card. And an Edgar Martinez for the Seattle Mariners. Ethan does know I like my Seattle Mariners for sure. Let me set that one aside for now. Put those right there. Then we've got, let's see, I can go through these cards right here. And I'll just hold them up like this. So we got a Ken Griffey Jr. Topps Chrome from 2020. We got a Bowman's Best Justin Dunn rookie card. That one's an awesome one. Double. We got two Justin Dunn's there. Oh no, we got three Justin Dunn's. Wait a minute. You need to go down there for now. Three Justin Dunn's. Awesome. Got a Jared Kelnick with the Seattle Mariners there. And we've got a Mitch Henniger. I think he's actually going to get some game time this year finally. I think he's back up and running again for Mitch Henniger. Then, of course, we got Marco Gonzalez. He's, I think, uh, as far as pitchers on the Mariners, I think he's a, a Felix Hernandez replacement. I think he'll he'll start picking up and doing pretty good here. Ken Griffey Jr. Classics 2014. 2014 Classics Panini for Ken Griffey Jr. Kyle Lewis, rookie card, rookie debut card. And we've got a storybook ending 2001 Cal Ripken Jr. Cal Ripken Jr. Uh, I got you, Bipster. I'll go do it right now. Mud Dog, are you on my bus? I'm 193, trying for 200. That's right. You got to get on there, Mud Dog. He's getting ready to have a 200 subscriber giveaway uh, coming up here. As soon as he hits that 200 subscriber mark, appreciate it if you did that, my dog. Uh, Andrew Jones should be in the Hall of Fame over Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, those are fighting words there, John. <laughs> there we go. Evan White. Uh, throwback card here. I like this design. I like the old tops design here. That's a Awesome one there, rookie card for Evan White. And then we got uh, Noel V. Marte, first Bowman card for the Seattle Mariners. Mitch Hanniger, rookie card for the Seattle Mariners. Oh, that says, that's Mitch Hanniger's rookie card. That's right. Okay, and then we've got a boom. Austin. Uh, Oh, who is that again? I can't, I can't make out the name. Austin Shenton? I think he's Seattle Mariners. Any yep. autograph for the Seattle Mariners? That'll go my 
Seattle Mariners Auto Box, and then also a Seattle Mariners 1986 design for 35 years of baseball since the 1986 design. Kyle Lewis, awesome there, Ethan. Appreciate these, appreciate the bonus cards you always put in there. Let me set this aside real quick. Most of all these are Seattle Mariners, except for Cal Ripken Jr. And this one, I don't know, I guess he just thought he'd throw that one in there. But that's cool looking. Trout, elbows only. Uh, air high five. And a fist bump <laughs> from Trout and Air. All right, put that on top. Let me set these aside here really quick here. All right, um, where did I put, okay, put them back in the team bag. How's that sound? Keep them nice for now. All right. We just set these off to the side here. We can pull it back out after a little bit here, and oh, when we're done. All right, so we are going to go into part three of the stream today. The Bipster Box, eating Zaxby blue cheese, black and blackened salad. Blue cheese, black, blackened salad. That's an interesting. Eating Zaxby blue cheese blackened salad. I don't know what you're talking about there, Bipster, but hopefully it's a good lunch for you. All right, still early for my lunch, but let's get into the Bipster box. We do have, I think we got enough to last us through the end here of this week. I'm pretty sure before we get the next packs in from the Bipster box, I think we got 15. Nope, 12. I didn't update it. So we've got 12 packs. So we've got one, two, three, four days. This will cover us till Friday. Hopefully I get the Bipster box in by Friday. That would be nice if it made it here on time. Um, so let's see. So after today, we will have nine, nine left. Okay. But without further ado, so this will be for tomorrow. Set that toward the back there. That way it's kind of hidden. So let's see. I know we had, uh, let's see. Cards in your car with our Posada. Are you still here? Cards in your car with our Posada. Are you still watching in the background there, buddy? I hope so. <laughs> Cards in your car with our Posada. And let's see. It looks like Mud Dog's still in the house. I'm going to choose Mud Dog. You get it. You, you, be on standby there, Mud Dog. I'm going to lay down the rules what we're going to do here, okay? Um, and this is just, it's uh, you're not choosing the pack to get the cards. They're my cards in a family mail call package that the Bipster sent to me. I mean, although some of these cards may come to a sale near you one of these, a sale one of these days um, in the not so distant future. But uh, for now, we just get, um, get interaction with you guys to see which family mail ball bag I'm going to open up. All right. So Mud Dog is here. Um, John Fishman, I know, is still here. We got a few people watching. Um, if you are lurking about in the background just put in there put it put in the chat I'm here I'm here that way I know who to choose instead of going back in the chat and see who was here from the beginning I know uh, John Fishman was here I know Ethan was here but I think he's golfing with his buddies so um, I just need a few more so I got mud dog so far I know Bipster's probably here John Fishman might be lurking about in the background um, 
but if you are in the live chat, just type in, I'm here. Uh, Bipster's here, John Fishman's here, 19 is too high, John, but I didn't ask you to pick a pack yet. Okay, so I'm going to have Mud Dog go first, and then uh, John Fishman will choose second, and Mud Dog will, yeah. Oh, Jack Wigless, I'm a lurker, first time watching live, hello. Oh, no problem there, Jack. <laughs> Jack Wigless, there we go. <laughs> I'm a lurker, first time watching live here. All right, well, let's see. Uh, let, let's go with um, Mud Dog first, uh, John second, and uh, Bipster third. Or Bipster, do you mind if I let Jack choose one? Bipster, do you mind if I let Jack choose one? The, the, the new lurker? <laughs> I don't mind. This is just fun. Waiting to see what we pull out of the Bipster box next. Let me, I want to try and get the title. There we go, the title in there, the Bipster box. Um, but we are going to have Mud Dog choose first. So I have a number between 1 and 12 to choose from the box there, Mud Dog. Okay, Mud Dog, go ahead and choose a pack 1 through 12. Still waiting, no problem. Okay, so we're going to have. Uh, Mud Dog first, John Fishman second, and Jack Wigless will choose third. So uh, Mud Dog, a pack, choose pack one through twelve. As I try to knock everything down again, Mud, uh, yeah, Mud Dog, pack number one through twelve. All right, Mud Dog chooses number three, John Fishman one through twelve, but number three is already picked, so choose a different one. John Fishman. At least on YouTube, if you are lurking, you can't get arrested. <laughs> oh, John, 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 John. Okay. John Fishman, 1 through 12. Number 3 is already gone. Choose one. Hurry up, buddy. Uh, yeah, I know. I got, your, I got pack number 3 for you there, Mud Dog. Me set it up here. That'll be that'll be Mud Dog's pack that he chose. Okay. Come on, John. How long do I gotta wait for you to pick me a pack? 11, 24, 38, my old high school gym. Alright, John Fishman says number seven, three, four, five, six, seven. Alright, and then uh da, 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 da. where's he at? Where's our lurker? Jack Wigless, pick a number 1 through 12. Number 3 and 7 is already picked. So I need one more pack. John Wigless. Newer person in the channel here. First time watching live. Hello. John Wigless, 1 through 12. Remember, number 3, number 7 is already picked. Those will be the ones... Uh, I know you said seven a while ago. I've got it. Three is for Mud Dog. Seven is for John Fishman. I'll take eleven for two hundred dollars. <laughs> I like that, John. Or Jack. He says I'll choose number eleven for two hundred dollars. Seven eleven. There we go. Three, seven, and eleven. My favorite customers. Seven eleven, my favorite customers. <laughs> Alright, so three. We'll be first, then we'll do seven, then we'll do eleven. So for tomorrow, I gotta get another box in here to fill in the gap so these don't roll over. Hold on, let me set these somewhere for now, right here on the edge, maybe. There we go, it's a tight fit, but they're in there. These aren't going nowhere. Oh, here, I'll hold them in my hand here so you can see it. i got to close my lid because this will be our platform here to bring the cards a little bit closer to the camera, okay? So this will be 3 and 7 and 11. So 3, 7, and 11 in that order, okay? <laughs> and again, that's just... 
just to see which packs we open next in our in our Bipster box. It's a family mail call package. He started this last year, and I can't even remember what episode we're on for the Bipster box, but every time he sends me the next Bipster box, I put it in the box here now. And then we open up three packs at a time. But we still handled the ones in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania area. Sold off the stores in Texas. <laughs> All right. So we are going to get ready to go in here. Sold off the stores in Texas. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and start off with... Uh, uh, who chose the boxes? The package. I even forget now, but that's okay. It's just to have fun on here and see what we can pull out of these boxes. Hopefully you guys are enjoying my uh, my auctions on eBay. Hopefully you're enjoying my auctions on eBay. All right, so we've got Vita Pinson here, outfielder for the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, Vita Pinson, Fairfield double. A Tuesday Fairfield double. Phil Necro, Phil Necro. Phil Negro is a Hall of Famer. Let's see. I'm going to have to give myself a little bit more room here. These will be the, the star players. These will be the Hall of Famers. Orlando Cepeda. Orlando Cepeda, Hall of Famer. Ralph Kiner, Hall of Famer, right? Ralph Kiner. Here, Ralph Kiner double here. Fairfield double for Ralph Kiner. All right. Uh, box eight, nine, and ten. Oh, is that what you're doing? You're, you're <laughs> He's speeding up the frequency now. He says box eight, nine, and ten are on the way. <laughs> uh, Jack Wigless, uh, nice. Yep, I'm down in Dallas. Work on the fresh food. Foods team, fresh and packaged bakery stuff. There we go. <laughs> All right. Appreciate that there, Jack. Uh, after Sunoco Energy transfer merged, Norm Cash. Norm Cash. I think he might just be a star player, but not a... Uh-oh, look at that. We got, we got our next Candelaria here. Uh-oh, we got two Candelarias. We'll go over this as we're done here. Two Candelarias here. That's an awesome looking shot. Boy, he's he's got that serious look like boom. This is a uh, 1993 Tops. That's one of his last years, 1993. I'm going to put it over here and we'll go over that in a little bit. There's another John Candelaria. This is um, the 1988 Tops. 1988 Tops Candyman. 1988 Tops Candyman. We put these both over here and we will share our Candyman can set. Um, then we got, here we go, we got Manny Ramirez back in the game again. There's a Manny Ramirez. There's a Manny Ramirez uh, Gold Cup card. Manny Ramirez Gold Cup card. Okay. Then we've got a Jesus Aguilar with the Tampa Bay Rays, a Luis Castellano with the Cincinnati Reds, a Matt Chapman for the Athletics, a Orlando Arcia with the Brewers, a Ahmed Rosario with the New York Mets, a Michael Givens with the Orioles. Then we've got a Nolan Ryan Express here. Let me set these over here for now. The 2020s. Got a Nolan Ryan and another Nolan Ryan and another Nolan Ryan for our Nolan Ryan set here. I think you've sent me enough here on this one to make a complete mini set for that Nolan Ryan there, Bipster. But awesome, awesome, awesome there. Let's go on to pack number seven. So this is pack number seven. This is pack number 11. It looks like we've got some more. Uh, Oh, Will Smith, rookie card for the Dodgers from my 2019. And I apologize, Bipster, but I, I 
I'm, go I, I'm gonna try and get to it today and see what cards I still need for the 2019 Topps Gallery. But I know I'm getting pretty close. I know I'm getting pretty close there. So we've got the 2019. I'm gonna slide this over a hair so I can put the 2019 galleries over here. But we got the Will Smith with the Dodgers rookie card. There I can put put that glare right there. But I'll hold it off at the angle here. Man, he looks like he's about 16 years old there for Will Smith. When was he born? Let's say it on here. 1995. My word. But it has it only it only has his 19 2019. Wow. He was born in 1995. So he's only 26, but that that picture can't be when he's 26. If so, he sure looks awful young there. All right, uh, Mitch Hanniger with the Seattle Mariners. Oh, a Fairfield Mitch Hanniger, Fairfield double Mitch Hanniger. Then we've got a, a Raphael Devers with the Boston Red Sox for our 2019 Topps Gallery. Working on that set. Here's a Topps. 206. Is that Jay Bruce? Jay Bruce, outfielder for the Cincinnati Reds. All right. Star player. Got another uh, a Kyle Tucker rookie card for the Topps Gallery 2019. Then we've got a Joe Maurer catcher for the Cincinnati Reds. That's an awesome looking upper deck card back in the day. Then we got a Joe Morgan, Joe Morgan, 1983 Flair for Joe Morgan, Hall of Famer, Greg Maddox Hall of Famer, another Greg Maddox, um, Robin Ventura Vintage for the Mets, what year is this one, 2002 Robin Ventura. A Dennis Eckersley Hall of Famer. Bartola Colon. Ooh, I haven't seen this Bartola Colon before. Awesome looking Bartola Colon there. Right. This is a 2003 Upper Deck Bartola Colon. Then we got a Sean Anderson with the Giants rookie card. A Mike Clevinger with the uh, Cleveland Indians for our 2019 Top Scoury, uh, Tommy McCarthy, 1946 inductee, Hall of Famer, Carl Hubble, pitcher, Carl Hubble, Hall of Famer. Then we got a Max Muncy here with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Got an Al Kaline, upper deck. This one is 2005 upper deck for the Al Kaline. And Kudo, Kudo, Johnny Kudo, Cincinnati Reds pitcher from a 2010 Tops T206 style. All right. Um, uh, we need some more Chris Sabos. <laughs> Candyman sweetness. I don't believe so. Uh, I don't get to interact with Fuels teams, really. Uh, four or five more Ryan sets. Four or five more Ryan sets. Okay, just dropping by to say hi. Hey there, Michael Heath. No problem. Uh, you're going to be building a bunch of Diamond King sets. Hint, hint. <laughs> okay, when I start separating and sorting out all these cards you send to me, I'll be looking for the Diamond King sets then too. <laughs> it's just too many to try and organize. I, I only get limited space here, uh, Bipster. But, uh... Got to run, uh, but great to see you again, Donald. I'll be here more often. Great to meet everyone else. Have a great day, fellas. No problem there, Mud Dog. Thanks for popping into the stream. I'll catch you later. Be safe, my friends. Take care, Michael, Michael Heath. I'm praying for him. I enclosed my number in package if you ever want to talk, Michael. Oh, okay, you're talking to Michael Heath. Got you there, Bipster. 
Alright, so that's my Hall of Famer stack. Some star players here. We are going to go into pack number 11 here now. Pack number 11. Put these here. Put these here. Oh, there we go. I can actually break these up now. Sorry, I'm just trying to rearrange now that I got a little bit more room. This is my Hall of Famer stack. Tops 2021 stack and my Tops Gallery. Let's get into pack number 11 here to finish up for today. All right, so we got Manny Ramirez with the Dodgers. Tops Heritage from this 2010. Yeah, 2010. Tops Heritage for Manny Ramirez. There we go, Ryan Howard, Ken Griffey Jr. says. So I'm going to take these. These are going to go into my Ken Griffey Jr. holdouts here. I know it's kind of a stretch, but it does say Ken Griffey Jr. says, but that's a Fairfield double. All right. Uh, Alfonso Soriano, that's what I thought that was. Alfonso Soriano, Fairfield double. Star player. Yeah, star player over here. Uh, Jake, is that Jake, uh, Joe Maurer, not Jake Maurer. Joe Maurer with the Minnesota Twins. Okay, star player. Manny Ramirez again. Oh no, Erasmus Ramirez. There's the Manny Ramirez. 2007 ALDS. Man, Ram, hits, walk off, home run. 10-5. Then we've got... Oh, who's that? Oh, Albert Leonard Rosen. Rosen. All right, star player back in the day from the Ted Williams set. Fairfield double. Herb score. Okay, here we go. Some swell cards, though. Score. Uh, Bob Allison. Okay. Uh, Al Dark. Del Crandall. And Mickey Lolick. Mickey Lolick? I don't think Lolick is, right? Nope. So just put those as oddball cards. Uh, Craig Nettles. Craig Nettles. Uh, Tommy Henrik. Tommy Henrik. Craig, Net uh, Craig Nettles again. Charlie Keller. Charlie Keller. I don't think Keller. Nope. And Chris Chambliss. Chris Chambliss? All right, there we go. So some Yankee legends there from, I think it's probably a Yankee set that they put. Are, are these, is this from like a little Yankees uh, set here? Yankee, Yankee Stadium Legacy box set. So these are from like a box set. These Yankees. Lanky Yankee Stadium cards, right? So these are some star players we got out of here. We've got these Hall of Famers here, the 2021 Tops players here, the Tops Gallery here, and then this here was Ethan's package that he sent with the uh, elbows only uh, high five with the Kyle Lewis on the back here. So there we go. Hopefully everybody enjoyed this today. Um, we are looking at yeah, almost an hour and a half. Almost an hour and a half. So uh, hopefully you all are having a good day there. Um, I got a quick question for everybody that might be still here. Did anybody watch Eric Jabs yesterday? I know Bipster don't really go to Eric Jabs' channel, but I, I do on occasions just for some YouTube viewing and to say hi to my uh, your upcoming sale is going to be awesome yes uh, oh yeah I, I better start plugging that too we are gonna have a sale at the end of the month on March 27th on March 27th I am going back to go doing my uh, end of the month sales so we will have we will have fun with that. It was nice. Thank you for sharing with us, Tom. No problem. Um, but yeah, um, he was doing mystery packs in his 
86,000 subscriber uh, viewership that he has. I remember he had, I uh, can't remember, I think he had, I think he had over 2,000 people viewing his, his content. Um, these mystery packs that he sold on his channel yesterday were, if you did buy one, it was $78 a mystery pack. And he had 100 mystery packs, and it was a sold-out product. So do the math on that. $78 times 100. So there's $78 a mystery pack. And 100 mystery packs. So he did a $7,800 mystery pack break yesterday. Don't get me wrong. It was pretty awesome and intense. If you do want to go back and watch it, they were this this was a good mystery pack product, that's for sure. It was an awesome. I mean, he was opening up the packs and going through them just as quickly as he does a regular break. I mean, I mean it still took a couple hours. He did at least highlight some of the nicer cards that were in there. Um, they did have a uh, Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, graded card for his upper deck number one card. So, I mean, yeah, there was good hits in the mystery packs. And cards worth easily a couple hundred dollars some, uh, on some of the packs that were pulled. But um, that was four months for him to ship at least, if not long yet. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> they might not get their mystery packs till sometime this summer. But you know, it, he has the viewership level to do that upper end that he does. When you figure he's got 86,000 subscribers, there's going to be some people that have some money there. There's going to be some people that have some money. But for us here in this little itty-bitty YouTube channel, itty-bitty YouTube channel, uh, I enjoy doing what I do. Um... And, and that's what I like about it. I know he even has a hard time getting his monthly Patreon packages out because he's, he's just got so many Patreon packages that he sends out every month. It, it, it's turned into a full-time business for him. I mean, I'm just an itty-bitty little 1,000, little over 1,000 subscribers on my channel. And it's fun, don't get me wrong. But it's not as easy as you think to try and keep up the content. You know, I only end up with 5 to 15 people watching my streams at any one time. When I do my monthly sale, um, I'm fortunate enough to maybe have 20 to 25 people in the sale. And that's a, that's a good sale for me. <laughs> you know, I might make 100 or $200 or something. Sometimes on my eBay weekends with my auctions I do on eBay... Um, I might make make a hundred dollars and then I'm having a good weekend <laughs> if I can make an extra hundred dollars selling some baseball cards but you know it is fun and that's why I enjoy it I don't want uh, I can't imagine what it would be like for me by myself to get up to that subscriber level like like Eric has done on his channel so I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just very interesting. Um, I don't know how he does it with all the videos, Patreon, and a full-time job. Yes, yeah, says he's a full-time teacher. I know they're not... I don't know if he's teaching in school or if he's doing it remotely from his house. I don't know what... if John could probably tell us. Are the schools open? Are the schools open in Pennsylvania? Or are they closed like most everywhere? I mean, I think it was just last week here locally in our area. They just started opening up the schools. Um, last four days here, um, 15 hour. Huh? The Bipster of all things. Last four days here, 15 hout, hoot, shout. <laughs> um... But yeah, I don't know how he can keep his teaching job going and then spend his... I mean, he's got to be busy uh, all day either on YouTube or teaching students and then sleeping. So he got YouTube, sleep, school. 
YouTube Sleep School. YouTube Sleep School. So he's got to keep, be keeping very, very busy. Uh, days to ship out all my packages. It's hard. It's hard work. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I just did my my auctions from this last weekend on Sunday night, and I didn't finish till two o'clock in the morning. But I don't have to get up early on Monday. But it, it it's fun. Trust me. I sent out uh, almost forty packages yesterday. Uh, so it, but it was fun. It was fun, and I enjoy doing it. Uh, filled twenty four. Want list for people. <laughs> but yeah, some schools are 50-50. One group goes to school while the others work. For, yeah, yeah. Some students are going to school and some are working from, doing school from home, watching it on the, on the screen. Kind of like you guys are watching me. That's how the teachers are teaching kids these days and alternate every other week. Okay, yeah, kind of like New Jersey, where I've talked to my sister. Her, she's got a daughter in high school. Um, so, yeah, it gets kind of interesting. It does. It does. But you know what? It's fun. That's what I enjoy about it. I mean, when I finish my show here, I'm organizing, sorting baseball cards, getting my next auctions ready for this coming weekend. Because on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday... I, I post up about 33 auctions. I, I'm trying to get it up to about 100 auctions a weekend. And so, and then those that items that don't sell, they stay in the auction block for a couple weeks. I've actually sold some on the second and third round of the auction going through the system. Uh, when you're retired, you don't have to set an alarm. No, I don't, but I do get up at the same time. I get up about 7 o'clock in the morning. I can go to sleep at 2.30 in the morning, and I'm up at 7.00. <laughs> but yeah, I don't have to set an alarm. It's just I do, since my wife's still working for another month and a half, roughly. Um, she gets up, and I get up right after her. But it's fun. It's fun. Don't get me wrong. And I enjoy doing this. This is, this is what makes it fun. Sharing the history about the sport, and then talking about baseballs, looking at baseball cards. I mean... I keep telling Bipster I'm, I'm working on putting these in order and stuff. So I, I've got, you know, I can do that right now while we're talking and stuff so I don't waste any time. There we go. I just put, put these few gallery cards in order now just for something to do. There we go. Now we got a Mitch Hanniger on top there. Maybe he was on top when we started, but <laughs> you make... Uh, you better be making room. These are big boxes coming. <laughs> boxes? How many boxes did you send me, Bipster? How many boxes did you send me this time? Well, you did say up earlier there. You said uh, boxes. What, what, and what? I, mean, I got to go back in the chat here and say... Oh, you said you sent boxes 8, 9, and 10? So I got three boxes coming, Bibby? Or is it three boxes in one? <laughs> that means I got three more boxes left because you said 12, 12 boxes of fun, right? So I'll have one more round, a, a super round. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> now you got me thinking there, Bibster. Not telling. <laughs> if my wife sees so many boxes coming in, she's gonna start getting uh she's gonna start getting uh suspicious. <laughs> she knows I'm supposed to be I'm supposed to be slowing down, right? <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and get rid oh wait, no. I'm sorry, we're not done yet. We gotta go over the candle areas here. I gotta put two more in, in top loaders. I gotta go over my uh, Candelaria set here. What are we thinking here? You guys forgot to remind me, see? When I don't get the reminder, I don't remember. So let's get these other two Candelarias in here and get them in order. And then I will go through and uh, organize. I knew I forgot to do something. So we got to do these 
two Candyman's here. Laugh out loud, slowing down, you're right. <laughs> um, so this is a 1993 Candelaria, and this is a 1988. So let me take off the rubber bands here. This is only so that if I knock them over, they don't fall all over the place. So we got a 19... Let's see. This one's going to go here as the newest card. This is a 93 tops, and then that one's an 8 1988 tops. Okay, I see. One's the traded and one's the regular. There we go. So let me put all these together here and I'll just highlight through these Candelarias. We're going to start with the oldest currently. The oldest one I have, the Candelaria, is the 1970, 1978 tops. So, and then we'll just go through these really quick and then we'll get ready to wrap up the stream for today. I haven't decided fully what I'm going to do tomorrow yet, but... There's our Candelarias here. Got to get the angle away from the light up there and we won't get as much glare. So the Candelarias here. I'm going to put these right here. Let me scoot this out of the way real quick so they don't fall off when I take them down. There's a, another Topps Candelaria. There's the Candymans. The ones I have in my set so far. 1982 Batting and Pitching Leaders. There we go. This is, I believe, the 83, right? Yep, 83 Candelaria, 84 Candelaria, 85 Candelaria, 86 Candelaria. This, that's the 87, the wood grain, right? Right? Yep, the 87 Candelaria, 88 Donruss. I think that's the 88 tops, right? Yep, 88 tops. Um, Another 88 tops trade it. That's when he went to the Yankees. Uh, there's a uh, Montreal Expos, Minnesota Twins, All right? Uh, uh, Montreal Expos, Toronto Blue Jays. He made the rounds. The Dodgers. Another one with the Dodgers. Another one with the Dodgers, the Dodgers, and the Dodgers. So there we go. There's our Candyman's so far. Uh, the ones that Bipster sent me and some that I found. I think Bipster sending me all the Tops ones. And then all the other ones I found in Searching for the Gems on our Saturday Searching for the Gems. Okay. This Saturday I might, might decide to hop on early or late on Friday because I'm going to be a geographical bachelor. <laughs> My wife and daughter and uh, niece and sister-in-law are gone on a ladies' night out. They're going to Leavenworth, Washington to spend just a night out there and have a little ladies' night out. So I'm going to be a geographical bachelor on Friday night and Saturday. So, so never know. Maybe I'll try and pull a... Uh, a long stream on Friday and just go all day long take a little bit of a break for lunch take a little bit of a break for uh, dinner and just do a super long stream as long as YouTube will let me do the stream um, I might try and coordinate something with uh, Bibster we'll see maybe I'll, I'll uh, do a different kind of stream maybe it'll be a come chat with with Don Come chat with Don. Maybe we'll do that. Or we'll do our Hall of Fame Friday like we normally do. And then I'll come back on after my lunch break and do a stream until we decide to end. How's that sound? Would you guys like to do just a super long stream and just have some fun throughout the day? I'm kind of open. We'll talk. We'll, we'll we'll see what things work out. A pound of yeah, it's getting close to that. Let me let me weigh this and see what this weighs now. Let me put this on my uh, on my shipping scale here. All right, 
not quite a pound yet. Maybe by the time I'm done, I'll have uh, different candy bands here. This is 7.2 ounces so far. 7.2 ounces and growing. Uh, sounds like fun to me. We can do like the good old days there, Robert. Maybe I'll have you on as guests, and we'll have different guests. We'll use uh, StreamYard or something. It'll be uh, uh, Talking Sports with Don and the gang. <laughs> All right there, Bipster. All right. So let me go ahead and get ready to finish things up here today. This has been Donald Blomdahl, Hall of Fame veteran sports cards and collectibles with our biography, Andrew Jones baseball bi player biography we did today. We opened up Ethan's family mail call package here and more. And the Bipster box, we did the Bipster box, three packs from here. So we'll have again for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday will end the Bipster box unless we get something for in by Friday. If we get it by Friday, we'll be good to go. And then we'll be on the spot for Saturday. But if not, I will, uh, Donald, I will do a stream yard next week sometime. Oh, that's pretty cool too. All right there, John. That might be fun. That would be fun if I could fit that into my schedule. But hopefully you all enjoyed this. This is my t-shirt I usually wear on Mondays. Edgar, Randy, Ichiro, and Ken. All right. I always wear a, one of my throwback hats usually on, a, on this type stream. Tomorrow is my Topps baseball card set review. I'm still trying to figure out which one to do for sure. It may be... I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> but it's going to be a most likely 90% good chance it'll probably be a 2020 product. It'll probably be a 2020 complete baseball set. One of the 2020 products from last year. And we'll leave it like that. Starting the 14th, I'll work Sunday through Tuesday and every other Wednesday. Oh, okay, that is cool. That's cool, John. So you'll be open for more days. So we will see you around the channels. We'll have fun. And you all take care. And until tomorrow, be blessed, like Bipster says at the end of his dreams. You all take care. And we will see you tomorrow morning for sure. Same bat time, same bat channel at 10 a.m. Bye for now.